Hey everyone, welcome back to What's Going On. I am on location, technically, today. This weekend I am house sitting for my parents, so I thought I would bring my whole sewing room here and basically do my project here this weekend. Take advantage of the air conditioning and nice weather and the pool and I'm so excited. So hopefully I'll be able to kind of do this project a bit quick or at least it comes together quick enough so I can take advantage of outside. It sure started off pretty strong to say the least. If you follow me on Instagram or if you follow my dog on his Instagram, you'll see that he got sprayed by a skunk. So at about 2 a.m. we were giving him a tomato bath. Boy, was that fun. Just an FYI, tomato baths are a myth. That was the first thing I thought of. It was 2 a.m. I was literally asleep. I had no idea what was going on. We're going out now to go and get him some skunk shampoo. So hopefully that will work. But he's pink right now. Pink puppy. He's a pink puppy. <laughs> you look like the horse from the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> which is super adorable, but I still feel really bad for him because uh, Skunk got him good right in the face. You probably won't see much of Farley in this video because he is going to be outside, but I will be going out regularly to check on him and hang out with him and probably toss him in the pool. Hopefully the chlorine will also help with the smell. So as I was saying, I brought my whole sewing room here. I had to plan ahead of what I was going to do. Instead of, you know, planning ahead and actually maybe cutting and getting everything started at home and then only having to bring my sewing machine here. No, no, no. I didn't do anything. I was like, oh, I'm gonna cut my pieces out ahead of time and I'll serge them all ahead of time. Then all I have to do is bring those pieces, put them together, done. No, I did absolutely nothing. Regardless, I am doing it today and I'm super excited for my project. I've actually been planning this since last summer. So now is the time I am finally doing it. I was waiting until I found the right pattern that I wanted to use for it and I didn't but I'm going to be using patterns that I used for different projects and put them together to make what I want. Classic stuff. I did find a pattern. I think it was in my pattern haul, the 172 pattern haul that I did. It's this simplicity pattern and it's basically a little play suit romper with an overskirt, which I have wanted for ever. They had them in the 30s, 40s, 50s. It was just a thing and they're so cute and I really, really want one. So today I'm actually going to be making one, but I am not going to be using this pattern. The more I looked at it, yes, it has the things that I like and possibly would want, but it's not exactly what I want. What I do want is the same top as my blue and white striped dress that I made a few weeks ago with new look. 6457. I'll put it up here if you don't remember it, but I absolutely loved this pattern. I've used a couple new looks and this is the only one that came out super good and that I really like. I did change the sleeves to make bow sleeves, so I'm going to be doing that again for this one. For the shorts, my very first project, I made a romper. So I did cut out a pattern with my own paper for the romper pants, but these go down to my calf and I want to make sure that they actually do go to my thigh. I'm going to use the top the same because I really like the pockets. And I also liked the pleating in the front. Hopefully it turns out we shall see. For the fabric, this was given to me last year and I have been saving it. When I saw the fabric, this is the exact thing I wanted to make with it. I just wanted to wait until my skills improved a little bit and I felt more comfortable because I love the fabric and I really want this to work. It's so cute. It's almost like a maroon and cream gingham. They are curtains. There's six curtain panels here. I love it so much. It's not the bright red, so yes, it's a little tablecloth vibes, but that kind of works even better because it'll be a perfect picnic play suit, perfect for the beach. Ah, I'm just really excited and I absolutely love these curtains. So thank you, Dale. I can't wait to use them today. I actually think I'm going to have way more than I need. So I think I might make maybe a separate top with it. Probably not today, probably not this weekend, but eventually. I really hope I brought everything that I need. Let's get cutting.
one. Judas, no! <laughs>happy with it. I kind of wish I would have made this a little bit longer. So I actually had this idea to do this on the last blue and white dress, but I wanted to just make the pattern and see what it looked like first. So basically all I did this time is I made two of the facings. Normally it just has the one, so I just doubled that. And then on one side you saw, I knew I wanted a split kind of rounded edge. So I just used the corner of my pocket. And then I took just a little bit of seam binding to just kind of give it a little bit, I don't know, make it more pop. So I'm actually really happy with how that turned out. As for the pants, I do not remember at all how I put these together. <laughs> what I have to do is cut off a little bit where the pocket would normally go. I remembered what I did. I finished one side here. So as you can see, the pocket is in here and then you don't lose any width whenever you took that in because the extra piece in the back. So basically all I did, I started with my shorts, the front, and then I just put the pockets together already and I surged it around. So they have to be right sides together. So basically now I just have to turn the pocket inside out and then put this little rounded side together and now I'm just going to go and sew right here and then I'm going to serge it, press it, and then it's going to look like this one. It's all surged underneath where it's attached together. The pocket's surged and then everything's pressed inside out. So I'm going to go and finish this one and then I'm going to put my pleats in here and then attach them together. I just did it the best zipper of my life and then pulled it right off.
I've just tried to stick it back on and I'm obviously fraying the tops and it's just not going back on at all. Ugh. So I think I'm going to have to rip this completely apart and put in a new zipper, but I only brought one zipper with me. Awesome. Oh, this might have to be a two-parter because I still have to do the skirt and I'm just super discouraged right now. Like if you learn nothing. Three days later. Okay, I'm gonna try this again. <laughs> oh my gosh. That zipper made me lose my mind, actually. So I ripped off the zipper. I am home now. It's actually been two, this is three weekends since. I ended up starting another project and then I ended up doing a whole other video. I wanted to keep on my schedule, so I had to put this one kind of on the back burner, but I definitely wanna have it finished. So it's going to be finished today because I don't have much left. Again, shouldn't have said that. Before I start, I should probably give a little update about Farley. He is okay. That whole skunk fiasco was a fiasco. We ended up giving him a, a ton of baths. He still smells a little bit, but it's pretty much all gone. But I honestly don't know what was in that skunk spray because something happened. You're so cute. You're so cute. So what happened last time with the zipper, it's because I use the long dress zippers and basically I cut it off, not even thinking about it. And I was thinking like, don't zip it up all the way. Don't zip it up all the way. What did I do? I zipped it up all the way and it just came right off. I tried to fit it back into the teeth. No luck. I have the new zipper on and basically what I saw to do. So I started off with just lining the zipper up on one side. And I just stitched that in. All I made sure was that there was enough of a tail at the bottom that the tab would be near the bottom and it wouldn't affect my stitching. And then it didn't really matter how much was coming off the top because I have to trim this anyways. I just lined that up and I stitched it normally. And then I flipped it over to the other side and then I had zipped it up where my final stitch was. I ended up making a mark with my marker on the opposite side. So I know that's where my final stitch needed to be. And then I went one step further, exactly where that seam is, I made a mark on the opposite side. So I knew that's where the zipper had to align. And then I just pinned it exactly where the seam line was to make sure that from the bottom and the top, it was equal. And then I pulled it up to the top. And then again, I made another notch to show exactly where I had to stop sewing on the other side at the very top. The other thing I noticed is that this top flap is actually shorter than this one, so they don't line up perfectly. So that's a little annoying on the back, but again, I have really long hair, so I honestly don't think anyone's really gonna notice it that much. I definitely do. I tried to fix it. I ended up unstitching and then pulling this down a little bit, and it kind of lines up a little bit more, so it was actually worse than this before. So it's something that really annoys me but that's the best I could do. Now I've trimmed off the top of the tabs. I ended up going over the very top with a few stitches all around the teeth on both sides. I even have some fabric glue and I ended up putting a little dab on both sides. I let that dry and now the zipper cannot go up any further. <laughs> so the romper portion is basically done. I still have to do the little stitches here. I'm just gonna do that at the very end and work on the skirt. Game plan for the skirt, I'm actually going to try to do it with as minimal cutting as possible. I think all I'm going to do, and this is because my pattern for the 1955, the one where I made the bed sheet, that skirt pattern is literally just four long rectangles and then they do them pleated and then gathered at the same time, but there is no shape to it. It's just a rectangle. So these are really long rectangles. So I think I can do the same thing without having to cut at all and do any side seams. I'm planning on doing buttons in the front. So I'm just going to use both side panels on either end of the curtain as the sides of the skirt and then just gather the whole thing in to match around my waist. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by just kind of putting it around myself, seeing how long I want it. I think I want it just below the knee. If it ends up being a little bit shorter or a little bit longer, I think I'll be okay with that. And I also don't want to have to do the hem. So I'm just going to be using the bottom of the curtain as well. And then once I get that measurement, I'm just going to literally cut straight across the whole skirt. And that's going to be my skirt.
you breathing right beside me is not helping. And you laying over top of everything is not helping either. There's too many puppies in the kitchen. There's too many puppies. <laughs> having to take off the one of the hems because the bottom and the top panel that fold over is different sizes so whenever I put them over each other you could always see the line outside of it so it was a bit bigger on one of the sides so I ended up just unpicking all the stitches and I folded it over just to make another hem but now they're both equal and I still have the rolled under hem from the side of the curtain so as long as I line it up from the bottom and work my way up even if they're not completely equal on the very top, I can just trim that. All I have to do is make sure that the bottom squares align. It seems like it's gonna be pretty easy, and now because this is rolled over, I have enough fabric here and stability to add my buttons and buttonholes. So now all I have to do is whip up a quick waistband, make sure that there's enough on either side that they overlap. Guess he doesn't wanna be in the video. What's the matter? Hello. Oh, you want your belly rubbed? Oh, you're just too cute. The skirt was only supposed to take me a little bit. You're gonna make me last all day. I don't have time to play with you. Up, up, up with you, serial boy, up to the sky, sail around the moon. Come here, my little prince. You're so tiny. Let us float, float, float through the clouds and just have a lot of fun. So I have my waistband here. I've been running into problems with this fabric. It's very thin. And honestly, it kind of rips easily. So normally what I would do is do a basting stitch with a heavier thread to gather it at the top. But honestly, I'm afraid to poke holes into it any more than I need to. So I think what I'm going to do is just line up my waistband and kind of insert it into one end. Start pinning it. I know the front placket can't be gathered at all, so I think once I have this kind of lined up and in, I'm just going to pin it. And then I think I'm just going to start kind of scrunching it and gathering it by hand and try to make them equal that way. And I think that is kind of my best case scenario to do. London dropped its dignity. Yeah. So has France and Germany. Yeah. All the hands are dancing to a raggedy melody full of originality. Sing it, so. The folk. Guess he doesn't feel like facing the camera. What are you doing? Why are you sitting backwards? All right, we have a skirt. That gathering way, not my favorite. It's okay. I don't mind pleats not being exactly equal. I kind of like it being a little bit more. You good? A little bit more uneven. I don't know. I'm not all about perfection. I find if it looks too perfect, then you notice if there is one off or something more. So if they're all kind of uneven, then it just looks like it's supposed to be that way. So I like the pleating kind of gather technique that I did, but at the same time, if it wasn't for this fabric, I still would have used a pin and thread to do it. But it turned out okay. So now, Last step, I'm just gonna do the buttons, put the buttonholes in, sew up the buttons, and then we're gonna have a reveal tomorrow. Finally. Are you excited? No?
creeping down. My poor heart just moans some when I'm slumber bound. But before I hit the hay, there's a prayer I love to say. Bless my pony river, oh, bless my ma and pa. Bless my heart, I want to roam. Wherever they are, the more I linger by the way. details that I don't really love about it. I do want to say that I love it. I actually really, really like it. I'm really proud of it. It's something that I'm definitely going to be wearing. It fits me decently. If I would have bought this at a store off the rack sort of thing with the skirt, I would have just accepted that that's how it's supposed to be. But because I made it, I think I'm a little bit harder on myself. To be honest, <laughs> I think I actually just did a really good job, so I'm proud of myself about that. The two major things that stand out to me is the first one is this little collar. I don't know if that's what you call it. I really like this detail. It looks really cute. I think it should have just come down just a little bit lower, but it's not the end of the world. And then obviously at the back, they didn't match up. So that is, you know, really annoying to me. But again, I don't think it's something that unless you're really looking at it, people are going to notice. And then my hair is always down and to the back or I have a ponytail and it's, it's going to be covered. So I don't think it's the end of the world. It's fine. The other thing is the pattern matching. And that's something I definitely have to work on. And I'm kind of upset because I did cut all the pieces out one by one. And I did try to pattern match, but it didn't work out, which is really annoying, but it is such a busy pattern that I'm hoping, I don't know, it could go either way. I'm hoping either it's such a busy pattern that you don't notice it, but then on the other side, it is such a busy pattern, so you, you might notice it more. I don't know if it's screaming at you. Maybe it is. I don't know. You'll have to tell me in the comments, but I'm okay with it. Skirt is a little bit too big for me. I actually haven't put it on together yet. I finished a skirt late last night and I didn't I haven't even done my reveal yet, so you guys are probably going to see this technically, kind of, not, no, you're not, but technically in video sense, you're going to see it before I actually saw it on. I haven't seen it all put together, but I did put on the skirt last night once I finished it, and it is a bit too loose, so I might go in and do a dart up the back, but it's really not that bad. I really like the skirt. I might go in and make pockets for it. I'm kind of mad that I didn't think about that at the time. The zipper obviously was probably one of the biggest problems I had to deal with because I made a stupid mistake and it was completely my fault. Uh, I've done a zipper like that multiple, multiple times. Almost any time I've used a zipper, I use those really long zippers and just cut them down to size. And I just wasn't paying attention. Off the rails, I went literally. So the zipper I think I put on three times on this one and only once on the other one so I think that's why it was so disappointing because I did it so well the very first time but again zippers is just <sighs> my Achilles heel I don't know it's like the bane of my existence I hate zippers but you need to do them so I'm just gonna have to keep practicing until I can do them. If anybody is watching that is a whiz at zippers, can you just let me know that you are so I know that it's possible to become really good at putting on zippers? I think that would make me feel better, just knowing that it is possible <laughs> because at this point, it doesn't seem possible to me. 
It was really cool to put the shorts together, even though it kind of stumped me for a minute. When I had made the pattern, I wrote out all the instructions that apparently I thought were good. But when I was writing them, I was writing them as a very basic new sewer. I had no idea what sewing techniques were. I had no idea, like I had never read a pattern before, so I didn't know how to explain it to myself. So now reading my instructions from when I didn't know to now when I know, I was like, what am I trying to say here? They don't know that we know they know we know. <laughs> It was just, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and like write out the instructions properly now because they were not helpful. But it is fun to see how, you know, using a pattern that I had made myself my very first time sewing to using it now when I'm a little, I'm more advanced, I guess you would say. It's just nice to see how far you've kind of come, even if it's a short amount of time or a longer, like mine over a year. And both times turned out pretty well. So I'm really happy with this look. I am so excited. We're about to go out and shoot the reveal. So I have to go and do that. It's so hot, but it started to rain, which really sucks. It's probably because I killed that spider accidentally yesterday. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, and I hope you subscribe. I will see everybody on Tuesday for my next video. So can that blue jay shut up? Oh yeah, yep, yep, yep. Every time. It's lipstick. I don't like when I say that. Ah! Blech. Like, who cares? No. Whip up a clip. <laughs> Romper. Holy crap. Nothing is flowing. Hey, ugh. Whoops. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh no, there was another other thing. Another other thing. Well, just gonna like. Ugh, blah, blah, blah. Hat. Look at that belly. Oh, yeah. I wasn't calling you. I was just snapping my fingers. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. Hey, everybody. <laughs> A quick run. So, you didn't see that, but all the pocket pieces just went everywhere. What is going on with me?